In lateral condensation, the master cone gives us an apical seal. The master cone should be fit to working length and have tug back or resistance to displacement. The master cone is placed with sealer and then a spreader is introduced into the canal at a depth two millimeters short of the working length. The spreader is used with gentle apical pressure and then lateral pressure to condense the master cone to one side. Then in the space vacated by the spreader, an accessory cone is placed. The process is repeated until the canal is filled. The advantage of lateral condensation is length control during compaction. The disadvantage is the obturation is not a homogeneous mass. As seen in this cross section, the accessory and master cones remain separate, but it is hoped that sealer fills in the space between the cones. To begin, select a master cone similar in size to the master apical file, which was a size 40 for this tooth. Measure the master cone at the working length, which was 25 millimeters. Insert the cone into the canal. The bottom edge of the forceps are aligned with our reference point, the incisal edge the same way the rubber stopper on the file was aligned with the incisal edge during cleaning and shaping. This cone seats to our working length of 25 millimeters. However, there is no tug back, meaning there is no resistance when pulling the gutta percha out of the canal. It easily comes out. Since the size 40 gutta percha seemed too loose, we will try the size 45 next. When this cone is placed, it has slight tug back, but it seems to be short of the working length. Taking this cone to the ruler shows that it is short of the working length by one millimeter. Let's clean and shape with a size 45 file again, so that the 45 cone will go all the way to the working length. The size 45 cone now goes to the working length and has good tug back, meaning there is resistance when trying to pull the cone out of the canal. After verifying that we have good tug back, Grab the master cone with the college pliers at the reference point. Verify that you have the correct working length on the ruler. And then squeeze the gutta percha with the college pliers until you make ridge marks. These markings will help visualize where the cone should be seated during lateral condensation. We will be using Grossman Sealer, a zinc oxide eugenol sealer that comes in a powder and liquid. Start by dispensing one scoop of powder and one drop of liquid onto a mixing pad or glass slab. The final proportions will vary depending on temperature, humidity, and degree of spatulation. Mix with a plastic or metal spatula until the sealer is eight granular and has a thick, tacky consistency, not too liquidy. The final mix should pull up from the spatula slightly before it breaks. This sealer is advantageous due to its long working time. Gather the sealer into a pile and prepare for the next step. Irrigate one last time and then dry the canal using paper points preferably the same size as the master apical file. In 
insert one paper point at a time until it comes out completely dry. This one is not dry, so we may have to use a few more. This paper point is dry. Now we can place the master cone with sealer. Grab the master cone at the working length. Now coat the apical half of the cone with sealer. Place the master cone into the canal, pumping it up and down a few times slowly in order to coat the canal walls with sealer. Verify again that the cone goes to working length and has tug back. For this step, hand spreaders or finger spreaders can be used. Finger spreaders provide for better tactile sensitivity and they come in different sizes. Select a finger spreader and set a rubber stopper that measures one to two millimeters short of the working length. Ideally, the finger spreader should be inserted to this length for proper lateral condensation. Insert the finger spreader into the canal between the master cone and canal wall. Apply gentle apical pressure holding for two seconds. Then apply lateral pressure to push the master cone laterally. Finally, wiggle and rotate the spreader before removing it from the canal. This motion pushes the gutta percha laterally against one wall to create space for an accessory cone. Select an accessory cone that is similar in size to the finger spreader and coat this cone with a small amount of sealer. Insert the accessory cone in the space created in the previous step. Carefully insert the cone, otherwise the tip will bend. The cone should be inserted to the same depth as the finger spreader in the previous step. The process is repeated until the spreader no longer goes beyond the coronal one-third of the canal, or when you can no longer seat any more accessory cones within the canal. Even the smallest size accessory cone would not fit in the canal. So we removed that one and this is where we stopped. For this step, prepare your torch and the endo plugger. Using the torch, heat up the endo plugger until it is cherry red. The heat will transform the gutta percha to its alpha state, which is pliable and tacky. Take this carefully to the tooth and sear off the excess gutta percha above the level of the orifice.
There was still some gutta percha above the level of the orifice, so we heated up the endo plugger again and scraped it all out. Once the gutta percha has cooled, it transforms back to its unheated beta state, which is solid and compactable. Now we can condense or downpack the gutta percha with the unheated endoplugger until it is flat and level with the orifice. Any excess gutta percha that remains on the walls can be removed with either a spoon excavator or an explorer. At the end of this step, the entire pulp chamber should be clean. Do not place any restorative material.